in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Mababos haparia tabalabos Radabos satam brasika tabalia rabos Bless his name faithful bakoba sipriataya You are awesome in this place You are awesome in this place Faithful God, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Sing, You are awesome, You are awesome in this place. Come on, worship Him, lift your hands. Testimony as a family. Hey, you do wonders in me. This is our testimony. You do wonders in me. Faithful God. Faithful God. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, you are awesome.
Yes, you are my king. Of kings. Yes, you are the Lord. Of the Lord. Yes, you are. Yes, you are the king. Hey. Yes, you are the king. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the King. Yes, you are the King. Yes, you are the King. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the King. Yes, you are the King. Hallelujah. We call you king. Thank you. The only one who is able to transform. Bless his holy name. Sheba kabara da bosaya. Mande basa preste kapali arabo. One generation will declare your praise to another. Forever, O oh Lord, you are king. Thy throne, O oh Lord, is forever. Thank you. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for the power of your spirit. Thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a faithful God, ever true to his word. This is why we are all gathered. We are not gathered before an idol. We are not gathered before an opinion or a philosophy of men. Hallelujah. We are gathered before the King. The King of Kings. Father, we thank you. We have come to receive. We have come to learn. We have come to grow. We have come to be free. Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Thank you for the power of your spirit. Thank you for the power of your spirit. Thank you for the power of your spirit. Hallelujah. It's always a delight in the presence of God. Not for the formality of, of it. But we understand that every time we show up in his presence, number one, we get to experience the love, the faith, the power of the spirit. When you stand before him, then all your fears and challenges melt away. When all things that surrounds become shadowed in the light of you. That's what happens in his presence. So we are exposed to the power of his spirit. The impact and the influence of the spirit of God upon your life. He's the one who causes the word of God to come alive in your spirit. Sets you above. Shakes you out of every excuse that men can have. And places you in a position where you can rule and reign with him. Hallelujah. That's what God is doing in this place. God is separating us, building us so that we can truly rule and reign with him so you will experientially rise to that realm where you are above the limitations of this system for the bible says we have been raised up together with him and we have been made to sit and so we demonstrate to creation that our concept of jesus being king is not just a religious opinion it is true that's why he called us witnesses. A witness is one who validates that the claim of another is true. And we were not there when Jesus died. We were not there when he resurrected. But the spirit of God who was there lives in us. And he's the one who walks in us. So that although we were not there, because of his ministry in us, we will prove that it is true. That's what makes us witnesses. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. We give you all the glory. We will never get too satisfied with your presence. 
Oh, I sense the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit. Just lift your hands. I sense the strong anointing of the Spirit. Can you just lift your hands, everybody, inside and outside for a few minutes and let the glory of God, I see his anointing and his power. Let it rain. Let it rain. See the strong presence of God moving all over this place. Open the floodgates of heaven. Yeah. Let it rain. Let it rain. The sweet presence of the Holy Ghost. Open the floodgates of heaven. Help me worship us. Let it rain. Spirit, the impact of His presence upon your mortal body. Let it rain. Open the floodgates. The floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Open the floodgates. Floodgates of heaven. The floodgates of heaven. Just the voices. Let it rain. Let it rain upon us. Let it rain. Open the floodgates. Open the floodgates. One more time. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Open the floodgates of heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Listen to me. Without the Holy Spirit in our lives, there's no transformation. There is an activity of the Holy Spirit in you. That's what makes you become supernatural. And so when we expose ourselves in the atmosphere of the spirit, we are not only changed, we are empowered. The kingdom life is not just a life of words. He said the kingdom of God is not in words. We are not talking of falling down. That's not the power. An empowerment comes from the word energies and energizing of your spirit. There is an ability of the spirit that is activated in you. So that although you are an ordinary man, you are empowered to do the things that are beyond your human capacity. How shall these things be? Mary said. He said the power of the highest shall overshadow you. That's where we get the word baptism. It comes from the Greek word baptizo. To be immersed in a flood such that you are not seen again. That you be immersed. That's what koinonia is about. Intimacy. That you become immersed in the fullness of the person of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, there's no empowerment. Without the Holy Spirit, you'll never live the supernatural life. 
without the Holy Spirit you remain under the limitations you try to get what you call the Word of God without the Holy Spirit it will turn into religion is the Holy Spirit who makes the word spirit and life He's the breath of God the one who came upon Adam dust and quicken that dust to become a living soul the Bible says we are of the breed of the second Adam who is not just a living soul but a quickening a life-giving spirit tell him Lord change me by the power of your word and your spirit tonight go ahead and pray please do not make it a religious experience God is really changing people and you can be that person tonight Expose yourself to the atmosphere of his glory. I see miracles, signs and wonders in the glory and the power. I see miracles. Signs and wonders, sing, Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. Sign out of faith, say, Lord, I partake. Lord, I partake. Sing, Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive I the fullness of your spirit. I receive wisdom. I receive glory. Sing, Lord, I receive Lord, the empowerment of your spirit. The glory and the beauty that comes with your presence. For the last time, Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. Lord, There is beauty and glory that comes out of a believer when the Holy Spirit not is not just when it comes to your life when the Holy Ghost is allowed to find expression there is a dimension of beauty there is a dimension of power and of glory that he brings strength for weakness audacity for timidity grace glory attributes of his presence when the Spirit of God is alive in you, He begins to produce the traits of the kingdom. Brings you to that point where there is nothing short of beauty and glory that emanates from your life. And all that see you will know that there is a fragrance of His presence upon you. It's not about your age. It's not about your gender. It's not about your level of experience. It's about his glory. It's called the glory, Kabod. The weight, the manifest weight of God upon your life turns an ordinary person into an awesome one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Inside and outside, listen. We have an assignment. We are not visionless people. We are not just church people trying to preach. Are you listening to me? We have an assignment. Every time we stand upon this pulpit, we have an assignment. A mandate given from God. The mandate is to expose your spirit man to the light and the glory of God's presence. So that you are empowered by the activity of his spirit. You are equipped by the knowledge and the revelation of the kingdom. He said, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. It's our job to bring you to a point where you don't just cram scriptures and know verses, but you come to a point where you understand the patterns of the kingdom. The Bible says he showed the nation of Israel his acts, but his ways, his principles, his methodology, he showed Moses. Whenever you lay hold of kingdom principles, you can reproduce results again and again. Hallelujah. That's why above and beyond the manifestations of the spirit 
Our goal is not just to have people fall up and down. Our goal is to equip you with the revelation of God's word. The greatest asset that any man can have in this life is not just a Bible. It's the understanding, accurate understanding of the word of God. It will empower you to rule. You don't rule by your human strength. In this realm, understanding is what leads the way. He said, in all you're getting, get understanding. Many of us are coming from different Christian backgrounds, full of religion and philosophy that are only a form of godliness without the power that can cause transformation. We are still under the bondages of Satan, oppressed by demons, living in poverty and lack, not knowing our assignment, moving without vision and without purpose. And the Lord brings you to a point where the kingdom of God is redefined. Not just as a religion and a movement called Christianity. But a life. A life of victory. A life of intimacy. Bringing you to a point where you understand that as we fellowship with the Holy Spirit, we have partnership with Him. You and the Spirit in partnership. Building the kingdom of our Father. Advancing the frontiers of His kingdom. Becoming agents of national transformation. This is our assignment. Lord, we brace up our spirits tonight. Even as your word challenges us again. Bring us to that point of understanding, O oh God. Deliver us from the religion of church. Deliver us from the religion and the traditions of men. The religion of Christianity. And bring us into the fullness of the life of God's glory and power in us. And cause us to be relevant in our generation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Walk up to 10 people. Just love them. Give them a wonderful hug. Make sure you do that smiling. Your citizens of the same kingdom. Your citizens of the same kingdom. Praise your name, and I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Can we sing this song this just one time? I leave, I leave to praise your name. I have no fear whatsoever. I have no fear of what tomorrow. Come on, celebrate your future, your destiny, your heritage in Christ. I have no fear whatsoever. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Turn to someone, turn to someone and prophesy. Say, I live to praise his name. I Come on. To praise your name. And I have no fear. And I, I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. For the last time, I live, I live. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Because you leave. Because you leave. Jesus, I leave today. I leave to pray. For the last time. There's no fear. There's no fear. It's amazing. Listen. Listen to me. It's amazing how many people live. Do you know how destructive fear is? Hallelujah. 
Fear can be so destructive. Let me tell you something. There are three there are three levels of fear that Satan uses to oppress people. This is not my message tonight. I just felt like challenging us. Listen carefully, inside and outside. There are three levels of fear. Number one is fear from your past failure. Satan uses the fear. I was discussing this with a dear lady. The fear from your past failures. And so every time you want to move forward, and the word of God challenges you to do great things for the kingdom. Every time you want to take steps of faith, the fear of your past failure, not just the fear of your past. You don't fear your past success. You only fear the past failures. And so Satan begins to tell you how many times you tried and tried again to catch fish throughout the night and nothing happened. When you conquer the fear of past failures, then you are ready to brace up for a victorious life. Hallelujah. Number two, fear that comes as a result of ignorance. There is fear that is as a result of ignorance. People say when fear knocks the door, call faith. It depends on what you call faith. Faith that is born out of religion will open the door and see fear standing. The antidote to fear that comes from ignorance is knowledge and understanding. He said, in all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. He said, she shall bring an ornament of glory upon thy head when thou dost embrace her. Doth not wisdom cry. He said, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. So there is fear that comes. How many of you have found yourself being afraid if we are going to do it, an interview right now on scriptures and the Bible? I'll be so confident. But the moment we are going to do an interview over cooking, I'll start fidgeting. The same me who was confident, who was, who was very confident a while ago. You know why? Because I have not mastered the laws. So I'm afraid of embarrassing myself before people. Are you listening to me? There is confidence that comes from the knowledge of the word of God. The operation of the principles of God. Many believers who do not expose themselves to the knowledge of the word. And many believers live in this category. Hallelujah. If I'm sleeping and a demon appears in my room, I'll not even pray about it. I'll just keep sleeping. Knowledge that sets you free from fear. Are you listening to me? If someone looks at me today and says, Joshua Selman, I want to announce to you that you're a failure. I'll say, God bless you. Glad to know your opinion. And that ends it. There is confidence that comes from the revelation of the word of God. Are you listening to me? If someone tells me, do you know you're going to be poor in this life? No, it's too late. I'm not just trying to claim it or pray about it. It's too late. It's not too late because of Naira and Kobo. It's too late because the word of God has been engrafted in my spirit, number one. Number two, my heart is already committed to obey the principles of God. Are you following me now? That's the second level of fear. The third level of fear comes from the opinion of other people. It's amazing how many people are unable to live the fullness of their lives because we allow what people to think about us. What would they say? What will this person? The condition to be criticized is that you are born of a woman. Full stop. Satan is destroying people who are criticizing him. Jesus is blessing people who are still criticizing him. The condition, listen, hear me. If you do not conquer the fear that comes from the opinion of others, you will never make headway in life. I'm preaching to somebody this night. Hallelujah. I refuse to let the opinion of others make me ashamed of believing the word of God. Someone looks at me and says, can this young guy be a Pentecostal blasting tongues? Your opinion is has no effect on me whatsoever. The future will tell whether I'm wasting my time or not. Are you listening to me? We worry too much about people and what they say. You want to come to church and you are wondering, ah, my roommates, they are gisting about something now. They are going to wonder, are you kidding? Let me tell you something. The fear of people is conquered based on the conviction you have over what you are doing. 
Your depth of conviction is what gives you audacity in spite of what people are saying. If somebody comes to hold my hand and say, I know you were when we were growing up. I mean, you, you, you are now the preacher. I mean, that's, that's, it, it, I mean, it, it doesn't even bother me. Are you listening to me? There is a depth of, he said, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. Persuaded. Somebody comes to tell me, okay, don't you think this Holy Spirit thing you're doing is too much? Why don't you strike a balance? Are you kidding? Or someone comes to say, are you really sure Jesus is alive? That's even the worst. Because I've seen him. I didn't just read about him in the Bible. I know he's alive. Not just because I read it in the Bible. I have seen him. That which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled. Even of the word of life. This is what we teach. Are you listening to me? So the first encouragement tonight is that you must conquer fear. Say after time in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shout it like you believe it inside and outside. In the name of Jesus. I, conquer fear. I conquer fear. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. My, God My God is alive. The word of God is true. The word of God is true. And God will not fail me. And yes. God will not fail you. Jesus was not playing games with you when he hung on the cross. Are you listening to me? No matter how much you are playing games, he stops when blood starts coming out. Jesus was certainly not playing games on the cross. A 33 year old man hung naked upon the cross. He's not playing games. And he died. To not just bring to us a life of purpose, but a life of victory. Are you listening to me? It's not just enough to live a life of purpose. You must live a life of victory. Your victory is proof that Jesus is Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm going to be teaching. I'll teach briefly. I want us to pray. Revelations 5. I'm only challenging us tonight. I want to provoke something in your spirit, man, as we pray. Hallelujah. I started by saying it's not just enough to live the life of what? You must live the life of? There are many believers who are purpose-driven, but they are not victorious. When you are not victorious, it will frustrate your being purpose-driven. Jesus didn't just die to give us vision and give us a life of purpose. He died to bring us into victory. A victorious life. Hallelujah. And tonight very briefly I'm teaching on reigning with Christ. Reigning with Christ. To provoke us to be conscious of the fact that we are supernatural beings. Hallelujah. One of the interesting revelations, please look up. One of the interesting revelations about the four living creatures as shown in the Bible. Um, in the book of Revelations, chapter 1, and, when, and chapter 4 also, when John the Revelator began to describe the four living creatures, he said something, very briefly, just to establish what I'm sharing tonight. Number one, he said he saw a living creature with the face of a lion. Say after me, a lion. Number two, he said he saw a living creature with the face of a calf. Number three, one of the living creatures had the face of what? A man. And finally, had the face of a flying eagle. What kind of mystery is this? I hope you realize that everything around the throne is a reflection of who God is. Hallelujah. Everything that God does is an outward manifestation of all that he carries. That's where we get the word glory. The fullness of the essence of all that God is. So when he says he desires that the knowledge of his glory covers the earth. He wants people to comprehend as much multifaceted dimensions of him as they can get. This is why there are six billion people moving across the earth today. Hallelujah. Everyone mandated to reveal a dimension of God's glory. And with 600 or 6 billion people, if everyone walked in purpose, we will still not scratch 
a minute portion of all that is contained in the person called God. Hallelujah. The face of a lion corresponds to the book of Matthew. Reveals God as king. Talks about dominion. His power. The face of the living creature connotes the dominion, the power, the strength, the ability of God. It's an ability that comes with the knowledge of the word. It's called exousia. Power of attorney that comes when you can stand to represent one in his capacity. Hallelujah. So the first living creature reveals God as a mighty one. Hallelujah. The second talks about the face of a calf and it reveals Christ as the servant. Hallelujah. It's not just enough for you to know that Jesus is king. You must understand that he became a servant. When he walked upon the earth, he walked as a servant. He washed the feet of his disciples. He served, leaving a pattern that everyone who wants to become like him it's not just enough for you to know your right and your dominion. You must embrace the spirit of a servant. Are you following me? In fact, the greatest in the kingdom, according to the teachings of Jesus, is the one who serves. The word minister is the word servant. Not Lord, as many people put it. Number three, the face of a man. Jesus Christ expresses his humanity. Jesus wept. Jesus was hungry. Jesus ate. Jesus was tired. Hallelujah. He expressed his humanity. That means there's nothing wrong when your humanity emerges in your journey to love God. Don't be ashamed of your tears. The Bible says, though weeping endures. Many times, we teach people to strangle their humanity as proof that they are Christians. The Bible doesn't teach that. There is glory that is derived from your humanity. When Jesus cried, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani, he gave us an expression that this was a human going through that excruciating pain. And so there's nothing wrong with your humanity except for the fact that without the others, it is incomplete. The fourth reveals the king as a divine supernatural person. The face of the flying eagle corresponds to the book of John. Hallelujah. So Matthew reveals Christ as king. Mark reveals Christ as the servant, the calf. Luke reveals Christ as the man. And the book of John reveals Christ as the divine one. It's in the book of John that three chapters were dedicated to the Holy Spirit. 14, 15, 16. And he began to talk about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not discussed so much in other chapters. Are you listening to me? And so, it's not just enough to let you know that you are a servant. You know, we have been trashing the issue of character. We have been trashing the issue of manifesting the character of the kingdom, living by the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Not bowing to Baal. Allowing God to lead us through the process of greatness. Hallelujah. We have been able to establish in our lives the concept of the kingdom. By now you understand that success is not about money. Success is about people. Impacting people. Blessing lives. Letting the giftings and the blessings of God in you become a blessing to others. But it's not enough if we stop there. Are you listening to me? We must provoke you to a point where you realize that you are supernatural. Say after me, I am supernatural. You are all supernatural. The divine life of the spirit is at work in you. Do you realize that you are not, if you are born again in this place, you are not just living by your biological life. It takes the Holy Spirit to help you believe this. That you're not just living with your biological life. The Bible makes us to understand that we are partakers of this divine life. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3. 
says according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness he said this has come through the knowledge through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue hallelujah there is a manifestation of the divine life that the believer must come into terms with because you see this biological system this social system has many ills there are sicknesses there are demons there are challenges and if all we have to show the world is that we are visionary people and purposeful people it's not enough to crown him king there must be that supernatural dimension we must demonstrate to the world that we have been raised up with christ and that today experientially we are living and reigning with him as kings and priests so briefly i'll just be challenging us and then we pray revelations 5. thank you jesus adonai lamb of god you are worthy worthy of my praise king of kings lord of lords let your kingdom reign in my life sing adonai adonai One more time, Adonai, Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy of my praise. You are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, King of kings, Lord of lords, Lord of lords. Let your kingdom reign in my life. Let your kingdom reign. Revelations 5 verse 8. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps. And golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Let's read verse 9 together. Verse 9, 1 to read. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. It says, For thou was slain, and thou hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Next verse. And has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign where we shall reign where it's in your bible it says he has redeemed us calling us out of every kindred every tongue every nation can i tell you something we represent different kingdoms different cultures different mindsets different ideologies we're coming from different parts of this country and outside of this country but the Bible says that through the shed blood of the living Son of God, He has called us from our different places with our culture, our tradition, our mindset, our limitation. He has called all of us and brought us into one family. And from that family, He has exalted us so that we become kings 
and priests that will reign now here in this earth. I hope you understand that John saw the things that were, the things that are, and the things that will happen thereafter. And part of his findings was that he saw that they sang a new song. This was the song that they were singing in heaven. They were singing melodies and saying, worthy, qualified, is he who is worthy to open the book. John Fah shared on the breaking of the seals. Hallelujah. To open the book and unlock the seals. It says, for thou hast redeemed the word us there is wrong. It's supposed to be them because the ones singing in heaven are not the redeemed. We are the ones who they did not benefit from the I hope you realize that these were the elders and the beings in heaven. They were not the saints who were singing. So it's supposed to be thou hast redeemed them, not us. As it's used there. Anyway, that's just for your knowledge and understanding. Thou hast redeemed them unto God by thy blood, calling everyone through the blood of Jesus. I enter the holy of holies. So from Adamawa, through the blood. From Lagos, through the blood. From Plateau State, through the blood. Are you listening to me? From Abuja, through the blood. Calling everyone out of every kindred. Come. Your religion is to do this. Come. You're coming. Come. Calling people. Come. Out of every kindred. Yes, we, we drink the blood of bulls and goats. Come. We don't believe in early marriage just come we are we are failures in life come no no i, I won't use you come 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 from every tribe every tongue every nation whether it's in the map of this country or not say after me i am called the blood speaks i hope you realize that the bible tells us that the blood speaks it speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The blood of Abel speaks vengeance. The blood of Christ speaks mercy. Beckoning on men. Let me tell you what mercy is. Mercy is God exempting you from a punishment that you deserve. Grace gives you what you do not deserve. Mercy exempts you from what you deserve. The punishment that you deserve. Are you following me now? And so, every man according to God's justice is supposed to die for his sins. I hope you know that. When Adam sinned, he died. In the days of Noah, when they sinned, what happened? They died. But the blood of Jesus, Jesus Christ being the veil between the inner court and the most holy place, allowing the sword of men to pierce him as that veil, and his blood invites men. He says, come. And you say, Lord, I'm limited. He said, no, my blood qualifies you. Mercy said no. I'm not gonna let you go. God bless you. Sit down. I'm not gonna let you sleep away. You don't have to be afraid. Mercy said Hallelujah. No. So every time you come from your kindred, our tribes and our cultures have their limitations. There are different tribes and cultures that are associated with different things. Are you listening to me? Associated with weakness, with sickness, with defeat, with failure, with all kinds of things. And the blood gives us a platform. And the king begins to call people out of every kindred. I'm trying to give you a, a drama of what was going on in heaven. They said, worthy. Worthy. Worthy is he that is qualified to call men in spite of their limitations. Any excuse you give, the blood covers. Let me tell you something about the blood. You see, two things. I'll tell you two things about the blood that will encourage you as we continue. Number one, everything that is seen through the blood is called holy. Anything, just anything that is seen through the blood. And when God was giving them a prototype of the tabernacle, 
he told them that in the most holy faith, this was in the most holy place, this is the instruction, that the high priest would never come in without blood. Are you listening to me? Because in the most holy place, there was the shibboleth and then the mercy seat. Two, two cherubims that protect the holiness of God. Made of pure gold. Overlaying them is what we call the mercy seat. Are you listening to me? Now, the priest, because there was no light in the most holy place. Are you following me now? The glory of God, the literal Shekinah of God is what gave light. And so once a year, in an event we call in the Jew, Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, where the entire nation of Israel will come together. And then the high priest that has been anointed to offer sacrifice on behalf of the people. Now, according to Jewish customs, the lamb had to be a year old because the age of the lamb determines the validity of the atonement. Are you following me now? And so the lamb had to be a year old without blemish. And the priest would sanctify himself lest he die beholding the holiness of God. And because the people are not sure whether God will accept him, they would tie a chain around his leg as he marches to the most holy place. Because God is so holy, he cannot behold iniquity. And so there will be people standing in the inner court. So that in an event where the high priest is not qualified by God's standard, he will drop dead there immediately. And they will use the chain to draw him out. Are you following me now? And so the high priest, the nation of Israel, would stand in fear. Hoping that God will accept their sacrifices through the high priest. Are you listening to me? And then the high priest, full of every kind of fear, will begin to take steps into the most holy place. The moment he opens the curtain, before he enters, the first thing that will enter is the blood. Are you listening to me? The blood is held in a, a bowl. And so he would enter with the blood. And immediately pour the blood upon the mercy seat so that when God looks at the mercy seat because you see inside of the ark of the covenant were three things number one the ten commandments that contains the judgment of God over men and every man had fallen short of it number two the rod of Aaron that bordered hallelujah symbolizing the life-giving presence of the spirit number three the, sh the bread a sample of the manna that fell from heaven that would not decay typifying the divine life the quality and the power of the word of God these were the three things that were in the most holy place I mean in the ark of the covenant and if the eyes of God were to look at the covenant without the blood he will see the ten commandments and everyone has broken it so God will be compelled to execute judgment otherwise he will fail to be God are you listening to me because I the love love justice and i hate wickedness so before the lord will look down the high priest will pour the blood so that when god looks he doesn't see the ten commandments again all he sees is the blood and because of that blood suddenly the shekinah of god will descend from above physically evidently the entire nation of israel will see the shekinah the light the glory the power of God and it will come and light up the most holy place and it's a symbol that their sins had been atoned for for one year and then the nation of Israel this one time will have the opportunity to say Yahweh the only time they are allowed to call the name Yahweh Yahweh you are glorious so glorious in your way and when Jesus showed up, the Bible makes us to understand that one thing to make us eternally acceptable before the Father, Jesus had an idea and he became the lamb. At the same time, he became the high priest. And the Bible says he sacrificed himself and he took his blood. When Mary wanted to touch him, when he resurrected, she said, do not touch me. She said, Rabboni, do not touch me for I have not yet ascended. What was his ascending to do? To enter the most holy place. There is a real tabernacle like that in heaven. 
it was what Moses saw that he reproduced on earth. Because according to the law of the spirit, it is always reproduced in the earth as it is in heaven. So Jesus, wearing his priestly robe, follow me. When he resurrected, he stood with his blood. And went into that most holy place. The very throne room. And went to the tabernacle and offered his blood. And said, these ones for every man. Born of a woman. That washes our sins away. Lamb of God, I worship you. And listen, the implication is this. Every time you want to approach the Father, the condition to approach the Father, let me use someone, Sam, please come. Do I, can anybody help me with a veil? I like using this. Any veil or something? Thank you. Watch this. This is called righteousness. Say after me, righteousness. The condition to approach the Father is that you must possess this quality called righteousness. The ability to stand in the Father's presence without a sense of guilt, without a sense of condemnation. Are you listening to me? Without a sense of sin. Are you listening to me? From the time man fell, no man, and the condition is that your righteousness must equate that of Jesus. That's the only condition to be able to approach the Father. And so, through the law, the prophets and everyone, they tried to be righteous, but their righteousness was short of that of Jesus. Are you listening to me? And then Jesus had this idea. When he shed his blood, he now said, Sam, you can come to the Father. But every time Sam wants to walk, his kindred, his tribe, the tongue and where he's coming from, reminds him that there are certain things that will not qualify him. And then the Christ says, if you believe in my substitutionary sacrifice, then I give you my righteousness. Come. Every time the devil wants to accuse you, listen, when God looks at you, he doesn't just see you. He sees the blood of his son upon you. And that's what makes you holy. You are not just holy because of a lot of religious things. You are holy on account of what Christ has done. It is the activity of that spirit of holiness that causes you to begin to to reveal the out what we call the deeds of holiness because of the presence of the spirit of god are you listening to me so he calls you out of every tribe out of every kindred and when you say i'm not qualified he says no come and reign with me my blood qualifies you if you do not have this revelation you will never be able to approach the father to rule and to reign with him the basis of the believer's victory is hinged on the substitutionary work of the living Christ. The blood that opens up the door. I hope you realize that when Jesus said it is finished, there was a cut from the top of the veil right there. You know what? Let me tell you something you may not have observed in your Bible. Do you realize that many years when the Ark of the Covenant was captured for a second time. It was captured once and with dancing and singing, David took it back. But a prophecy came that it would be captured the second time and it will not return. But the religious people still preserved the veil and they lied to the people there was the Ark of the Covenant there. Because when it tore, they did not see anything inside. When the veil tore, they did not see any most holy place again. Jesus said, let me reveal to you the deceit of religion that brings you to a point of piety and wants you to attain righteousness. A means outside of Christ. So the life of the believer is in Christ, with Christ, in Christ, with Christ. Never without him, in Christ. He is our sufficiency, in Christ. Reigning with Christ, living in Christ hidden in Christ, above with Christ. That becomes the language of the believer on account of what Christ has done. So that, listen, listen, the implication of this is not just for you to know that the blood has paved way for you to come. According to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, I believe, it said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. So you can come boldly 
without a sense of timidity not because of what you have done this is what the problem with religion we feel that we have done all of the rituals we can do and on account of that the bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags the bible says let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need hallelujah and so he calls you say after me in christ i am the righteousness of god say in christ i am the righteousness of god god bless you sam that means you do not need to do more to be accepted there is nothing you will do that will make god accept you more than he has accepted you look up but you will need to do more to be used by god this is where a lot of people miss it out to be accepted does not mean to be relevant and to be used are you following me now reigning with christ the first revelation is that the blood has given you access if you are writing right the blood of christ gives you access to the throne you cannot talk about reigning without a throne the blood of christ gives you access your access to ruling and reigning is not on account of what you have done it's on account of everything christ has done from then on the moment you accept jesus christ as your lord and savior he becomes your sufficiency it is always with christ in christ with christ in christ and for christ in him we live in him we move in him we have our being Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ that lives in me and the life that I live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. And he called us. And we didn't just stop at the gates. I hope you realize we did not stop at the door of the throne room. He said, still come. And feeling unqualified, he says, just come. And takes us to his very throne. And says sit with me in royalty that's what makes you more than a conqueror a conqueror is one who fought the battle i follow me now you fought the battle they beat your face like you came out from a meat machine you still won you are a conqueror and then you take the present you won and stagger your way to your wife and say sweetheart you have this she's more than a conqueror that's why the church is called the bride of christ more than conquerors that's not to say we are more than christ is to say by grace he loves us so much that he has exalted us and brought us to that point of royalty it's important you understand that the blood gives us access are you listening to me and as far as the father is concerned our access does not just stop at the gates that we follow right through and sit let me tell you something about sitting a king never sits until there is victory in his territory are you listening to me when a king sits in jewish days is proof that it is finished so when jesus said it is finished he didn't put satan as a factor he said it is sure finished are you following me now there is a revelation that will give you authority in this realm and he brought you and he made you a partaker of his divine life partaker of his divine life not a partaker of his throne alone a partaker first peter chapter 1 verse 3 okay can we have it on the slide first peter chapter 1 verse 3 says according as his divine power second peter is it first or second second peter i'm sorry chapter 1 verse 3 according as his divine power hath given us all things not some things all things that pertain unto life and godliness how through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue the next verse says wherefore has he given us these great exceedingly great and precious promises that by this we might be partakers of his divine life having escaped the corruption through loss hallelujah and so he brings us to that point where we are partakers we are joint heirs joint heirs joint heirs let me show you what a joint heir is sweetheart come jang pa permit me to use bridget for a minute appreciate this great woman of god now listen <laughs> i 
I'm free. I'm free. I just spoke a language. It's none of your business. Hallelujah. Now listen. If I own an estate, follow me. Please follow me. I need you to get a revelation of what it means to be joint heirs with Christ. If I own an estate, are you listening to me? Assuming, God forbid, this is just an example. Assuming this is one cleaner, one regular cleaner in the estate. Are you following me now? Who comes to clean maybe the bathrooms or something? And as the CEO of that estate, I suddenly come and get married to her. Now, whether she feels qualified or not, does not stop the fact that she has become the wife of the CEO of that estate. The moment we say, I do, it doesn't matter who hates her or who doesn't like her. There is a present tense reality that this has become the CEO's wife. Are you following me now? That means she's entitled to all the blessings and the rights and the benefits that follows that position. It's not about what she has done. It's called a positional advantage. Are you listening to me? Now, she goes back to her colleagues that they used to sweep together. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm standing by your side. Janfa will be a good caretaker. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen. Together, she has a right to tell the driver, the driver who has been insulting her every day, say, please take me to the market. He can murmur, but you will still kick the car. Yeah. This is not about what he wants. It's about an instruction. Are you listening to me? In the kingdom, we do not function because of any power of ourselves. We are the bride of this king called Christ. The body that he uses to operate. So when you come and look at a door and say, that door be open, they may murmur. That's the reason why I don't have any business discussing with demons when I'm casting out demons. They say, I'll not go. Uh, it's not whether you want to or not. I give an instruction as touching a kingdom. Are you listening to me? When there's a challenge in your life, you stand and say, Satan, you are looking at me alone, but let me introduce the second person to you. Or rather, let me tell you that I'm the second person in this equation. There is one who is mightier than I. Young Gicho calls him my senior partner. The one who represents the government of heaven. Are you listening to me? Whether you believe it or not, there is a crown upon your head. Sit down. Thank you very much. Are you listening to me? Christ has brought it to you. But now, although that is a reality from God's perspective, it takes knowledge through the knowledge. It takes knowledge for you to begin to walk in that reality. Are you listening to me? So, in the mind of God, he does not see any reason why Satan should prevail over you. He does not see any reason why we should be weak and beggarly under the elements of this life. Number one, because he has given you his divine life. The presence of God, the Holy Spirit, who represents the government of heaven, he lives in you. The Holy Spirit makes all the difference. The life, the very life of God, not the type. God didn't give us a type of his spirit called holy. No, the very spirit. If that same spirit that resurrected Christ, is it in your Bible? Romans chapter 8 verse 11. If that same spirit, I believe, am I right? That same spirit that resurrected Christ from the dead lives in not just your spirit, your mortal body. I, I have a mission to convince you tonight and bring you to that point where you realize that you are not ordinary. Nobody will preach me into believing I'm an ordinary person. Are you listening to me? No, you are not. This is not about bragging and talking. It's a reality that you did not even participate in. God brought you into that reality. And he says you are divine. So his life flows through you. His life flows all over you. The essence of the presence of God. Revealing the power, the life, the glory of God to people. Hallelujah. That you are ruling and reigning with Christ. Say after me, with Christ. That statement with Christ is the basis of your dominion in this kingdom. Because many people do things, we rule and reign with prayer. Listen, we rule and reign with confession. 
We rule and reign with fasting. We rule and reign with diligence, with character. As good as those things are, they are only helping you to understand the with Christ concept. In the realm of the spirit, there is only obedience to one name, Christos, the Christ. Are you listening to me? So if I fast and I pray and I study the word of God, if I am not in Christ, have you seen a lot of people do different activities that should bless them, yet you cannot trace the blessing in their life? It's questionable. They are not doing it with revelation. Two people can fast. Hallelujah. Two people can fast. Let me use Manasseh. He just finished a 70 day fasting. So, two. <laughs> you people are laughing. There are two ways to get it go to Juju or listen to what I'm telling you. Are you listening to me? That's why we are all not fat. How about that? <laughs> Let me use Manasseh. Come, sir. Now, listen to me. Listen. If he is fasting and as much as 70 days is, he stretches 70 days without revelation, you just performed an excellent religious exercise. A painful one for that matter. And there are many, listen. God bless you. There are many people who do vigils every day. They pray every day. The strength of your, your, your Christian exercise is revelation. There are people who pray in tongues without revelation and get angry at others and say, I'm praying just like this guy is praying. There must be something this guy is doing, Jerry. We are doing the exact same thing. You blow air on your cup, your spoon, nothing falls. You are angry. You are just frowning at everybody. It takes revelation. I am every time, let me tell you something. Every time I stand to minister to a sick body, Humanly speaking, you look at this sick body. There's cancer. Are you following me now? There is no human way or there's need for a new heart. How in the world is a new heart going to come? From your head? Are you following me now? But every time I stand, suddenly, the Lord does this every time. And when he does it, I feel the presence of God. Suddenly, when I stand, when there is any sense of discouragement, suddenly the Lord shows me in a split second the vision of the cross. He just reminds me, son, with Christ. The moment he says that the anointing comes upon me. And then I can tell the person, these hands I'm laying, they are the hands of two people. First of the one seated upon the throne. Number two, the vessel he's using. On account of this, I command a new heart. Or I command cancer to die. Or I come. Everything I do in life, I do it with partnership. The concept of partnership is a revelation that the believer must know. That's the reason why you can't destroy me. It's not pride. You know how many meetings we have gone to? Only God knows how many poisons. We eat everything they give us. Imagine somebody like me who will not everything. They will just give you, collect and put in your mouth. It's none of us that has for one night, as far as I know, roll on the bed and say, ah. There's no time for that. We walk ourselves from day to night. There are times that almost two or three days stretch. No sleep. And I'm not exaggerating what I'm saying. I'm not saying you should practice that. We're not just doing a purposeless staying awake so that you would stand and you put pins on your eyes and say, I must do it. Nah, that's religion. Lie down and sleep and God rested. You must rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I'm just provoking you. This is just a charge. With Christ. With Christ. With Christ. You're writing a book, no ideas. With Christ. I'm reigning with Christ. I tap from his authority. I'm not alone with Christ. We're doing this ministry with Christ. We are blessing you with Christ. You are watching one person, but there's the activity of the spirit of God. He's coming to you and causing the world to come alive in your spirit. That's what we cannot do. We can recite nice poems on stage that cannot bring transformation. That's the reason why I can be minding my business over there. 
and someone is standing peacefully and the next thing you find people blowing air for you what happened partnership the holy spirit is trusting and blessing people causing the world to prosper in your spirit and that's how i rule and reign let me tell you i have zero tolerance for nonsense in my life zero tolerance hallelujah i don't take failure as a friend i don't entertain discouragement with christ i don't see limitations in my life i repented from seeing limitations a long time ago i don't see limitations the only thing that limits me is the principles of the kingdom that there is a time for everything there is nothing you are ruling and reigning with christ you come to that point where the word of god is in your mouth and when you speak things will happen as though christ himself spoke because you are with him rise up and walk will keep embarrassing you until the day you say it with christ the, um, the sons of skiva thought it was just rise up and walk say we adjure you and then they close to make a name for themselves and the demon said every time i look at people i see partnership you are lonely i didn't see jesus walking alone i didn't see paul walking alone i see all of you alone One with the Holy Spirit is an awesome wonder. Say after me, I am seated with Christ. Far above sickness. Next week is our miracle service. It will be another opportunity. I love it so much. I love times that demonstrate the superiority and the authority of the kingdom. You must have zero tolerance for anything that is not in heaven in your life. Can I tell you something? It doesn't matter how many times you go to the hospital. Don't be discouraged, but don't tolerate it. Are you listening to me? If you must take the Panadol, take the Panadol with a revelation. And say, look, I'm not just taking this because I'm weak. I'm accepting the fact that I'm a student in the school of the spirit. Give me time. I may take three steps and start sinking. A day will come, my shadows will heal the sick. So do not be discouraged. Every time we talk about this issue of sickness, people just shrink away and say, ah, you are touching this one now. So no, 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 no. There must be a dissatisfaction. There is nothing I touch that doesn't get blessed. I have programmed my mind to believe that I'm a blessing. If I sit on this chair and you sit on it, something good must happen to you. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a ritual. If I don't bless you, the Holy Spirit will bless you. That's why I can never be a failure. As a person, if I fail, there is one that covers me. It's called paracletus. Truly, the believer is an unbeatable person. That's why when you fall, there's no room to say my trouser is dirty. Stand up and keep moving. One who reigns with Christ refuses to see limitations in your life. There's poverty ravaging your family. You challenge yourself and say, in Christ. In Christ, I am coming. In Christ. Ideas are coming. You are limited in many areas in your life. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. I reign with Christ. I have been called out of the limitation. People say, in your village, nobody builds a house. Not without Christ, yes. Confession without Christ is useless. Fasting without Christ is useless. Church without Christ is useless. But in Christ and with Christ, all things are possible. And people say when you get to age 30 or 35, there's a plague of death that kills you. In Christ. You begin, the Bible says you are hidden with Christ. And Christ in God. There's a revelation that sets you free. Do you not realize that it's a risk for us to be ministers of the gospel and then moving without some kind of security things? We don't hide our numbers from them. There was a time they were saying they call one MTN something that you call and then you go mad. In my mind, I say, oh God, I pray. I always pray the prayer of Jesus. That runaway prayer is not the prayer of Jesus. Jesus said, I pray that you don't take them out. Stay there and prove that I am victorious. 
you call me and heaven is saying hello through the phone this is my mindset i'm telling you this is my mindset now i know that many of us can feel spooky and religious about what i'm saying but it must crystallize in your spirit you are supernatural not because you are called apostle or prophet because you are engrafted in Christ. so you are supernatural are you listening to me you are supernatural every one of you my brother you are supernatural stand up as as much you are supernatural you are not ordinary you are supernatural stop being afraid of the business that you are doing you started it shut it down because you are afraid you are supernatural hallelujah you are absolutely supernatural the life of god is in you you cannot share their fears are you listening to me i refuse to be afraid in this life it's an audacity that the word of God gives. It's not about your statue. It's not about your age. Whether or not your name is in. There is nowhere that God says I should go that I cannot go. There is nothing he says that I cannot do. Because every time God speaks, he's walking with me. And the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Hallelujah. We are doing this ministry together. That's why koinonia is called intimacy and what? Partnership. Partnership with the Holy Spirit. You are a king. There's dominion upon you. Your words are powerful. Are you listening to me? Every time you speak, every time you hear us emphasize, don't speak rubbish. Don't command failure. Job was asked a question. He said, Job, has thou commanded thy morning? He asked Job a question. He said, Job, have you commanded your morning? And have you commanded the constellations to line up? Many of us walk into our lives and hope that in the by and by, things will change. I refuse to be silent. I reign. I reign. I command my morning. There is dominion and there is authority. That's the reason why if I prophesy to you that you are blessed. Listen, let me tell you, you are blessed. Because when I say you are blessed, I put in motion the power and the ability of the one who is in partnership with me. Do you realize you are not ordinary? All those cats crying and things disturbing your room when you enter a throne. There is a whole throne in that room. Carry that mindset. Satan does not have a right to wake me from sleep. There are only two reasons why I don't sleep. One, because I'm thinking or I'm planning. I don't spend, none of us spend more than 10 minutes to sleep. We walk ourselves to tiredness. When we lie down, we bless the Lord. I don't pray that fearful prayer. Oh God, if it's your will that I see tomorrow. Are you joking? There is work to be done. I'm aware that not many people are yielded to God, so I'm valuable. Are you listening to me? We are going to pray, but I'm challenging you. There is a mindset. I am reigning with Christ. No limitations. I am reigning with Christ. When I speak, I speak on behalf of the government of heaven. When I bless, I bless on behalf of the heaven. You need to carry, you have been blessing people from your power and might. You have not been doing it with Christ. The language tonight is with Christ. He walks through me. He talks through me. I may be ordinary, but he lives through me. When I look at people, he's through me. When I bless you, he's touching you. When I speak to you, he's speaking to you. With Christ. I reign with Christ. I do business with Christ. I do ministry with Christ. I bless people with Christ. I can never be short of ideas. I'm with Christ. I refuse to be under. If you see me under today, give me time. I'm coming because I'm with Christ. Am I challenging you? And you get up and lock yourself. And say, I have been called out of my tribe. Yes, nobody has ever worked in the embassy in your village. You are with Christ.
let every limitation be broken. We all came from places that are not celebrated. I am reigning, seated with Christ. It's no limitation. You came here from your various homes, not because of jazz, because of the authority, the compelling power that the partnership of Christ brings in your life. And now that you know you are a king, you begin to decree and legislate on behalf of heaven. You don't just speak as an ordinary person. See, I'm not talking about the fact that someone comes and just touches your head and you slap the person and say, do you know I'm a king? That's foolishness. That's not spiritual maturity. Foolishness. Not teaching you to just stand and brag and make noise. But I'm telling you that there is a revelation in you. I can never have lost that ability to pity myself. No, sir. It's impossible. I'm telling you, it's impossible to sit down and pity myself and say, ah, God, I wish I were like Aaron. What? What wish would you have again? You are in partnership with the king. I'm seated with Christ. All authority in heaven and the earth was vested in Christ. And I occupy that office with him in glory. I'm above sickness. I say it. I'm above failure. I'm above limitation. Demons are not my problem. I know that disobedience is my greatest obstacle. I have no regard whatsoever for Satan. I'm telling you. Ask him. I have no regard whatsoever for him. Zero tolerance. You must, many of us have this nice way of negotiating with Satan. Can you leave me for two days and then come back again? We have never come back from a crusade and then hold two weeks marathon training, preservation prayer. In fact, we just, those of you who have followed us for crusades, we just and play and sleep as we are coming back. You really think if Satan had the power to kill you, he would not. I've always said this. When a demon is hitting your zinc or making noise, you know, ladies, all these things, tell the demon, why don't you come? What's the disturbance for? Smith Wigglesworth came out and saw a demon rocking a chair in his house, a physical demon. He wiped sleep and came out. And when he saw the chair, he looked. He said, so is you. He turned back and went to sleep. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not faking it. It's true. John G. Lake, understanding that he's a king with Christ. No disease or sickness could touch him. Spokane was, was said to be the, the healthiest city in the whole world. E.W. Kenyon was a man who was so angry nobody died less than 70 in his church he would look at a bone that is cracked with his eyes and it will start cracking back and the person will jack up these are not people. their books are there go and read it men who walked with christ there was a monk who they were trying to put wood in the church and the wood was short he held it and completed it with Christ that you rule and reign can I tell you something as we round up somebody may be asking me and said if I'm with Christ why do I look weak and beggarly why do I look oppressed let me tell you Galatians chapter 4 quickly first let's go to Job 5 quickly the book of Job and let me tell you how God speaks Thank you, Lord Jesus. Tonight is an admonition. I'm angry in my spirit. Sorry, Job, Judges. Judges 6. Verse 9. Judges 6. Verse 9. Because we are going to pray. Listen, this is the season where you will reign without limitation. There is great grace. And God wants to produce glory out of your life. You cannot bless people when you are still suffering what they are suffering. I exempt myself. Verse 11. 
And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in offer and pertained to Joash, the Abbey's right, and his son Gideon, threshed wheat by the press to hide from the Midianites. Now, this was Gideon. Because of the oppression that had happened to them, the Midianites, Gideon was the least in his father's house and his tribe was the least. The Bible says he was hiding to secretly thresh something because every time they threshed it, they had some bullies who would come. Are you listening to me? They would come and bully them. Just like Satan does to all of us. Let me tell you, I was so oppressed by Satan for a long time in my life. Every time I sleep, I've shared my story. Demons, I literally have visions of demons walking to my room. And they oppress me. So once it's evening, I keep smiling, but people don't know what is going on. And one day, light came into my spirit that I'm seated with Christ above not below above above hallelujah I, I, I was staying in area BZ I ran to area BZ I ran to area BZ and I stood outside near my BQ and I shouted I said that demon that comes to oppress me I invite you this night that's what I said If demons are disturbing you, just tell them to come and pay us a visit. Have a pleasant experience. Ah, Josh, don't talk like that. Oh, we have seen men of God that have spoken like this and demons dealt with them. I don't know what they believed. But I know I'm sitting with Christ. I had a dream. Let's continue. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him. Now, Gideon was hiding. I follow me now. But hear what the angel, I, I hope you understand that word angel is the Lord himself. And said, the Lord is with thee. Thou what? Thou what? God does not call you by your past or present. He calls you based on how he sees you. He called things. Seeing a man who is hiding, he calls him a mighty man. Because he has seen the end of his life. That this guy is a warrior. So every time you dream, you see yourself conquering territories and you wake up and you are afraid. And God says, when will you begin to call yourself what I'm calling you? We have called ourselves what our villages have called us. I refuse to be named after my past. I refuse to be named after my limitation. I bear the name that symbolizes my authority and victory in Christ. Am I challenging you tonight? Because we are going to pray. He said, oh mighty man of Velo. One more verse. Verse 14, and the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this. So he had might, although he was hiding. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, that it is according to the power, that might that is in us. It's always according to that might. You are anointed. Are you listening to me? Let me... Let me walk up to some people behind and challenge them. Those who never feel that they are anointed. Sister, you are more than anointed. Are you listening to me? You are more than anointed. Are you listening to me? I'm very serious. I'm not just trying to preach. You are really anointed. You must have this revelation. Don't just stand and think these are the anointed men. No. You are not anointed because hands were laid on you. You are anointed every time you come into partnership with the Spirit. Hallelujah. And you are above. You are above. Do not allow the devil. If you allow Satan, he will spit out your bones. He will wreck your life. Refuse it. You must stand and legislate. Hear me inside and outside. The Lord is challenging us tonight. I see a mystery under the sun. Servants ride on horses while princes are walking afoot. But that we need to change it. I'm not alone. I am with Christ. Rise up on your feet. Seated with Christ. Reigning with Christ. With his blood he paid the price. Paid the price to bring us to that point of authority. Don't wait until you get into ministry. Challenge that sickness with Christ. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. I am not a failure professor. 
I can never be a failure. I refuse to be weak and beggarly. I want everybody to pray. This is not a prayer for men of God. Inside and outside. Prophesy. I reign in this life. I've been called out. Called out of every limitation. I've been called out by the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray. Declare. I am anointed. Say it. I am anointed. Say it. Declare. I am anointed. The Holy Ghost lives inside of me. I can heal the sick. I can cast out devils. My words are powerful. Producing results. I like you to pray. I can effect changes in my life. Make sure you're praying. Make sure you're praying. Come on, pray in the spirit. We have been called out of every tribe, every tongue, every nation. I'm anointed. Above failure, above limitation. Come on, pray. It doesn't matter what you are seeing. It doesn't matter what you are seeing. You are a king seated with Christ, ready with Christ over your finances, over your health. With Christ. With Christ, with Christ, oh hallelujah, I'm unlimited, in the name of Jesus, I'm unlimited, by the power of the Holy Ghost, he lives in me, the Holy Ghost lives in me, come on pray, I have power with God, I have power with God, I am a blessing. Ah. Professor, I pray. Le copra seca paria. Ran de kete bo shakete ha. En cross ke paria naba. I receive and I walk in the fullness of all the blessings that are associated with ready with Christ. Divine health, prosperity, joy, peace, authority, favor. Grace, glory, I'm prosperous. I am blessed. I am well favored in Christ. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Over your family, declare. Over your family, declare. Over your finances, declare. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I'd like you to repeat it. I have no fear. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I have no fear. Prophesy. I have no 
That although you are gentle like a dove, bold as a lion, I refuse to fear, not failure, not limitation. I am a king. Prophesy to yourself. Say I'm royalty. I like the lady who came out and said I'm a princess. No inferiority. No inferiority. No complex. Let it die tonight. Let inferiority die. Let every complex die tonight. I'm the best that I can be. I'm the best that I can be. Hallelujah. The best that I can be. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Hear me. Can I tell you something? When you walk in this consciousness, Satan will be far from you. No matter how a madman is, he doesn't enter fire. No matter how mad, people say he doesn't know, he will not know whether it's five naira or ten naira. Set fire and see if you come and enter it. No matter how mad he claims to be, he knows what fire is. The Bible says he maketh his angels wind, spirit, and his ministers flames of fire. Can I tell you something? Refuse to allow the things that you see govern you. After, if I die of sickness today, the last word that will come out of my mouth is by his stripes, I am healed. I believe the word of God more than the result it will produce in my life. Are you listening to me? Hold the hands of somebody. Pair yourselves into two. We're going to take the last prayer point. Now, take it seriously. This is not the time to just be nice and try to check your wivon. We're going to pray. Listen. Listen. You are going to prophesy. Are you listening to me? Take it seriously. Some of you are just smiling. Hold the hands of somebody. Hallelujah. We are going to prophesy. You are going to speak. Now that you know you are anointed inside outside. The Holy Ghost is there. Call the person blessed. Use your kingly authority. Come on saints of God. Kings. Priest, command their morning, cause the stars, the constellations to align for their favor. And the stars fought for Deborah. And the stars fought for Deborah. We command nature. We command the elements, both in the realm of the spirit and in this realm, to align in your favor. Bringing you victory. Bringing you grace. Prophesy. Make sure you are speaking. You are blessed. You are the head. You are not the tail. You are above. You are not beneath. Death is far from your life. Sickness is far from your life. Poverty is far from your life. Whatever you touch is blessed. Whatever you touch is blessed. Blessings on your finances, on your spiritual life. Your ears are open to hear the voice of the Spirit. Your eyes are open to see realities in the realm of the Spirit. Every inferiority dies in your life. You are rising higher, higher. You are walking in favor. You are walking in glory. Prophesy. Speak over your neighbor. And watch the power of the authority of Christ in you at work. Whoever you bless is blessed. 
whoever you speak upon is blessed. Come on, tell him you are blessed. You are blessed, blessed, blessed beyond the curse. Break sickness from their lives. Break sickness from their lives. Break the bondage of sickness, the bondage of poverty, the bondage of failure. You do it. Don't wait for a man of God. You are anointed. Do it. Do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me, I declare, I declare that, I that I am great. Inferiority dies from my life. Dies from my life. I, refuse I refuse to be inferior. I am above. I am above. Say it one more time. I'm above. I am above. Say I am, I am anointed. I'm seated with Christ. Seated. I am royalty. I refuse, I refuse sickness. I refuse poverty. I refuse failure. I embrace the glory of God. I embrace the grace of God. I am one with Christ. I am victorious in this life. I see no limitations. I am victorious. One more time. I am victorious. Give God a big shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, go back to your job. Go back to your class. Go back. Are you listening to me? Go back to your family members. Go back to your roommates. Go back to your class members. Go everywhere. And tell them a message. The message is that with Christ, you are above. That's the message. With Christ, you are above. Listen. It's an assignment. Throughout this week, it must be your confession. When you are walking, walk conscious of the fact that you are with Christ. whatever was not permitted to be found in the life of the living Christ refuse it reject it people may criticize you reject it they will not be there to sympathize with you reject it don't wait for somebody to do it for you there are people you will be inviting to come for miracle service there are some of them that the moment you call them the Lord will give you a word of knowledge about their case don't sit down there and say hey am I qualified Mercy qualifies you. Lay hands on the person and say, Thou devil, and end comes. Whether they call you pastor or pastor's wife, that's none of your business. When they call you at home and say, The landlord is coming to kick us out next week, I like you say, All right, all I need you to do at home is cheer up. You shut down your phone and say, Lord, are you not called the father of spirits? Every man's spirit is in your care. There are rich spirits on the earth. I call them. My father. It's called the father of spirits. Hallelujah. There's one scripture we're going to be studying this week. Hallelujah. Job 22 verse 28. That's going to be our verse of study as we prepare for the miracle service. Job 22 verse 28. It says, and ye shall decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. Please meditate. I know many of you know the verse of heart, but it has not changed your life. That means the light has not entered your spirit. Hallelujah. Organize Bible studies with it. Call your friends. Your enemy is the person that comes to distract you when you are studying that scripture. Hallelujah. Pray it. I prayed about the creative power of the spoken word. And I use Ezekiel chapter 37 when God was showing me. I first saw it in the life of Bishop Oedeko. And I saw it in the life of Kenneth Copeland. He's not a very charismatic man who will lay hands on you. 
But if that man sends a word in your destiny, it will shatter your life and bring the Garden of Eden out of you. I said, Lord, there's something. There's something about this. And the Lord led me. He said, let me show you what I showed them. The Bible says he confirms the word of his messengers and performs the counsel. Hmm. There's no word of a king that goes without. And that means there are many of you who are experts in using vulgar and ungodly language. Welcome, architect. Everybody here is an architect from this night. When you design nonsense, the Lord will lift it before your eyes like what fell over Peter. And God will say, look at what you have been drawing. There are many of us who have been drawing rubbish. We speak every kind of thing. I'm a failure. It's not for people like us. Ah, that my big head. Hallelujah. May God give you so that we'll get. What kind of prayer is that? Let me tell you something. So that you will know there are many prayers that have been prayed on your behalf that should be rejected. You just bend your head and shout amen to everything. I used to have a teacher in secondary school. And every time he wanted to bless us, he would say, may your road be rough. Yes. And it was, I didn't know it was a, all this sociology, philosophy, one madman somewhere brought something that may your road be rough means that you follow the path to destiny. But when I found out that my Bible was saying something else, I refused it. That you go through a challenge does not mean you should speak it and claim it and enjoy it. You conquer it and move forward. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and make a path. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.